Hello guys and welcome to the delayed edition of the Unrecord Cast. We're gonna have a great podcast tonight. This one, two great guests, since one of is casual. Uh, we have our first guest, Mobile Master 102. Hey, what's going on? Uh, I just wanted to ask... Okay, there we go. I, I, I was going to say, does like you were streaming there. But anyway, hey, what's going on, everybody? How are you guys doing? Yep, we are live. We're doing it live. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, yeah. I just wanted to ask... Okay, there we go. I, I, yeah, I was, I was going... just going to acknowledge that your stream wasn't live there, but looks like it's live now, so we're set. Yep. We're uh, ready to go. Yep. And next we have Kamasubu. Hey there, happy to be here, Lester. And we are happy to have you on, so... Uh, first question, how are you guys doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, just been playing some Far Cry 2. How was that for you? Oh, uh, pretty, it's pretty boring, to be honest. Uh, a bit frustrating <laughs> with having to get places because of respawning enemies, but, um... I don't know, like, there's some charm to it I'm having. I'm going to finish it at least to get to the better Far Cry games. Mm hmm Moogle, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been playing Lost Odyssey. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Dota 2, but that's just the daily presence for me. And uh, I've been just kind of... That's pretty much all I've been doing, really, in terms of like how I've been, so. All yeah. Right. That's great. And we have a new follower? Yes. Explosive. Thank you for following me on Twitch. Um, yeah, so thanks. <laughs> um, first question is, are you guys excited for the Witcher 3? <laughs> well, I, as I know nothing about the Witcher series in general. But, uh, like, I played the first one for a little bit. It's okay. Played a little bit of the uh, second one to see if there was a difference in the gameplay. And, obviously, it's more uh, traditional action RPG rather than the way it was in the first game where it was a strategy type of thing where you just wait for your character to attack. And kind of, it, it required a lot of strategy. The second one, the same way. Um, the third one is more action-oriented rather than just waiting to see what the enemy is going to do you're you're just pretty much going in you know mm -hmm. um and it's i, I think what your three looks awesome uh and the whole uh well, i guess we'll talk about that i guess that topic is probably going to come up later on but it looks pretty damn cool um i can't say for certain if i'm going to actually get the game so um yeah that's pretty much it yo what's up oh there yeah. you are Get yeah, yeah what's you doing? Up? I'm doing fine. I had to do, I had to crunch some <coughs> extra homework, so I said I was going to be late. Ah. Uh, nah. So, uh, all right. Thank you for coming back on the podcast, buddy. Oh, no problem, man. Like <laughs> I said, anytime. How are, uh, what have you been up to lately? Um, homework, and that's pretty much about it. I've been trying the game a little bit on the PS3, but. The only thing I've played is X Men Origins Wolverine, and that was about it. So I've just been relaxing so far. And uh, are you excited for the Wizard Three? Um, I'm indifferent on it. I can't say because I haven't finished Witcher One and Two yet. Yeah. I have them on Steam, but I haven't that's, finished them that's, yet. That's the situation I'm in. I haven't finished either game, and I'm I'm I still am looking forward to playing the third game. It's just. Uh, one situation is that I don't have the money for it, and two, I don't even know if my computer can really uh, play it unless I get a better video card. So I'm, I'm going to take my chances at some point and get it, but because uh, it, it is a pretty demanding game. But you know, that's just how the cookie crumbles. I think you need a 770 to play it, if I'm not too mistaken. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's not bad. It, I mean, it's, I think worse. But it's not better than um, Arkham Knight, though, because <laughs> Arkham Knight is like, you need a 980 to run that at max ultra. Damn. Uh, as for me, like, I've never played any of the games, so to be honest, I'm not really looking forward to them at all. 
in regards to Witcher 3. I mean, it's, I've always seen it as not being my kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's like I said, we'll see how the game uh, comes around and once the reviews roll in and see what everyone else thinks of the game. And Because um, usually uh, I would ask a friend or something to see how the game is and that kind of get uh, get their general consensus on it before I actually try it out for myself. Uh, usually I'm the other way around. I just buy the game and play it. But The Witcher 3 is the kind of game that I've been kind of sitting on uh, wanting to buy because I haven't played either game. So It's yeah. doing well on Metacritic, though. I think I saw it at like a 93% on Twitter. So um, a, lo a lot of people are giving it good feedback. So I might check it out in the future, but as for now, I still have to beat Witcher 2. Um, when I beat the other ones, then I'll definitely pick up Witcher 3. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the um, what do you think about Sissy Pot I mean Sissy Pot that read the Gimp in the PC version? They did? This is news to me. According to Fun Fucks, they completely gimped it so that it would be uh I guess in sync with the PS4. This isn't they, the first time I heard of something like that. Uh, I think they did the same thing to Watch Dogs, if I'm not too mistaken. Yeah. I've heard a lot of... I don't understand that. Anyway, sorry, go on. I was gonna say, I've heard a lot of people having trouble even trying to download The Witcher because it takes so much uh, usage of their computer to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like I said... Uh, it, it is, like, as I said before, it is a very demanding game, regardless of it being gimped. Um, I'm not one for graphics in that. I just want to, I just want the game to be playable. For the love of God, that's all I ever want, is a game to be actually playable. I'm gonna have to agree with that, because, um, shitty, unoptimized games on PC, yeah, that is a no-go. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Sounds like someone's fucking their microphone. Lester. Me? Uh, uh well, someone's doing that. it. No, sorry about that. That was just me. Oh. Like, I was oh, like, tangling okay. my wire and I kinda, like, dropped my headset. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Nah, uh, it's, it's all good, dude. Um, yeah, like, it's just, you know, it's gameplay over graphics for me. Uh, if the game is playable, mm -hmm. and, uh, because it, it, and you think about this in general, if the gameplay. Uh, if the graphics do affect the gameplay, which it can at times, there are some uh, very, uh, very ignorant and like uh, obnoxious glitches that will happen in the game once in a while. But like I said, it's it's just gameplay over quality for me. I, I I really don't care about the graphics as long as that I'm having fun with the game. I don't care how bad it looks. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, the last question. What would it take for you guys to get an Xbox One? To have games? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like the only requirement. <laughs> yeah, that's the like, only thing. What what game would they have to make it Xbox One exclusive for you to get an Xbox One? It will have to be like something monumental. It, it, like if, if yeah. they do something like um, next Silent Hills, that um, they bring that back to life and they put it exclusively on the Xbox. It had to be something extremely big for me. Yeah, it'd have to be really huge. Like Killer Instinct, I'm interested in, but that's not enough. Like a game that's still incomplete for me is not enough to buy a four hundred dollar console. I mean, the it's it's bad enough that like. There's these consoles, and like people are comparing both consoles to each other, and they're both different systems, and they both work differently. The the games, obviously, uh, just I mean, well, there's no games on the Xbox One except, and and if most of the exclusives that were on it are on the PC now, so you're pretty much better off just paying the money that you were gonna get for the Xbox One to get a PC. So to me, I just feel like getting an Xbox One is virtually pointless unless mm -hmm. you are very dedicated to your gaming and you don't care about exclusives or whatever, and you just want to play uh, play on the console itself. That's just my general opinion of it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like as far as the PS4 goes, I'm buying that exclusively for Dying Light and Phantom Pain. So. Mm -hmm. 
Um, if anything, I would settle with the PS4, but uh, I, I'm i just not a fan of the new consoles all that much, uh, mostly just because they don't really have games I'm interested in it yet, so that's pretty much, that's that's just my opinion. Next question, what is your favorite game that everybody hates? <laughs> oh, what is my favorite game that everybody hates? Hmm. Oh, you, you have to give me like five minutes to think about this, so I'll let everyone else do it. Renegade? Or Kamasubu? Oh, that... That is really a hard one. I'm like with move on that one. That's like that's a hard question. Okay, you know what? Right you know what? Uh-huh. Okay, I I know there's a game that came out last year, uh, Dragon Guard Three. Everybody fucking hates that game. I don't know why. When it first came out, everybody was like, oh, "It's mediocre. It's shit. The voice acting's terrible." <coughs> DSP. <laughs> um, but like the game itself is not that bad. I mean, they patched the frame rate. Slightly, it's still very dippy. Like it's it's not that great frame rate, but it's still playable. It's a really fun game, regardless of, uh, of how bad the frame rate is and the story is decent. The voice acting, I mean, the cast is okay. The only the only fucking character that annoys me is Mikhail, but other than that, the game itself is really fun. And I and it's a great addition to the Dragon Guard series. Uh, and yeah, that's just that's pretty much it. Oh, okay, I think I know mine. Uh, Resident Evil 6. I mean, people hate on it for the whole wiggling the stick thing mm-hmm. and pressing X to win, but, I mean, it did what I've always wanted Resident Evil to do. It put in a good melee system so, you know, you don't feel like you're paralyzed from the neck down unless you're aiming a gun. And it's it, those tank controls in Resident Evil 4 all over again, man. I fucking hated that shit in RE4, but at the same time, I love the game. But I think that shit was kind of annoying to deal with. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, anyway. but I think yeah, but I think they I think they really improved it on Resident Evil 6, and then in Revelations 1 and 2, they kind of like went two steps back, and it's like, and it's like they just became real disappointing compared to how good I thought it was, despite the flaws of you know. Running at the camera, insta death cutscenes, the stupid vehicles, and I'm I'm gonna have to uh, as as much as I respect your opinion, I I disagree <laughs> my own right because I actually think Revelations uh, and Revelations two did a good job on the melee combat um, because it's not too sluggish, it's not too intrusive, it's because you're not forced, you're not obligated to, you're not like forced to attack like uh, like you were in RE4 where you were kind of like you had to hold the button and you have to keep attacking and shit and then you have to switch back to your gun there's like so much frames to it so damn slow that you'll get hit no matter what you do but in this game it's much faster and I still think that's great in RE6 it was really annoying to deal with because like sometimes the knife is utterly useless but at least they changed it up in RE Revelations I don't know, I actually liked, like, running up the zombies, just punching and kicking them in the face, and it's like, with Revelations 1 and 2, I mean, like, now it's become, like, press X to charge your attack, and then you <laughs> attack, and it was, you have to stun the I think it's first. I think it's more nostalgic than anything, though. I, th- I think they wanted to go back to the tank-ish kind of um, control method, like they had in RE4, but at the same time, they wanted to keep the action kind of... Uh, they, they they wanted to keep the action going, so I I feel like yeah. it, I I feel like it was a great idea for what it, they did, but you know I'm I'm just glad they didn't go with the RE6 route, because no, that shit could be very annoying sometimes, and some, and most of the time it would work against you if you really think about it. No, I can I can see where you're coming from. I mean, like they did say like they were trying to go back to their roots with Revelations. It's just eh, it's like you know, oh, bioterrorism in Resident Evil world is like pretty much a worldwide global effect now. I can understand the series being more action now. It doesn't really need to go back to its roots for me, but I can I can get you. Yeah, and it looks like Renegade dropped. Yes, Mr. Ari Kamsur here. Um. Mr. All right, I'm back. Mr. Yeah, Renegade. I, I don't what about you, Mr. Mi- Renegade? I was gonna say, what about you, Mr. Ari oh. Connoisseur? 
Oh, wait, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Like, the <laughs> one thing in Revelations I hated about the physical attacks, <clears throat> now you have to stun an enemy to, in, in order to physically attack them. It's like, I'd rather just be able to freely do it if I want to. All right, what was the question? Because my internet dropped for, like, about a minute. Uh, what is your favorite game that everybody hates? Uh, god damn. I have to look. <laughs> I have to think about that. <laughs> it gave me time to think about that too, and I was like, oh, wait, everybody. I, because everyone fucking hates Dragon Guard 3 for whatever reason. I fucking love that game. <laughs> so, yeah. And I had Resident Evil 6, friend. <clears throat> so we were into like an RE debate there, I guess. I wouldn't say it's RE6. I, I, I think, um, a game that a lot of people hate is, uh, Revelations 1. No, I saw like, a lot of people love that game. A, a lot of people love it, but it's split. It's it's weird how the RE fan base works because it's, um, it's mixed. I I heard about the mixed opinions about Revelations. Because no, no, it's like uh, it's hard to explain, but I'm gonna try to explain it. The the fan base where I come from from RE fans, they can't stand anything past the RE three era. Like they don't because anything to play like RE four, they don't like it too much. So I guess you can say. Uh, the diehard Resident Evil enthusiast who likes the survival horror and tank controls and stuff like that. I guess you can say they don't like Revelations to a certain degree, but I appreciate what they brought to the table in terms of atmosphere and uh, bringing in modern horror with um, <laughs> some classic kicks here or there. I think that that was the best representation outside of RE4 because RE4 was really just an action game at the end of the day. When it comes to when it comes to like the generation now, I mean, you, you have to really think about it. Like, or, or, you can't live in the past. I mean, there's always there's always more room to improve upon the gameplay. And if you really think about it, that, that applies to any game that comes out. And uh, and nowadays, like with the hardcore fan base, I mean, they want them to live in the past, but at the same time, people want them to kind of expand on the gameplay itself. So, um, I mean, not everyone could be happy. Uh, this just goes to gaming in general. You well, like that, what you like, play what you want. Well, that's yeah. uh, that's strange, Renegade, because like I saw a lot of the people like that you were talking about, and they seem to love Revelation because, like, finally they're going back to what Resident Evil truly was. But you know how it is. There are some old dinosaurs to say, "Oh well, Capcom's never gonna bring RE back from remake." So there, there are people that say stuff like that. But um, for a more uh, concise opinion on a game that a lot of people hate, uh, that I play a lot, a lot of people could not stand the first Kane and Lynch game. I fucking love that game to pieces. I mean, even though the sequel was dog shit, I thought that the first one was a nice little attempt at a first person oh, shooter. God. I heard how bad friggin' the sequel was. Uh, I never even played the first. <laughs> yeah. The, fir the first, uh, the first Kane Lynch game I heard of was the sequel, and like going from that, I never wanted to play the first game either. Oh yeah, if you if you played the sequel first, it will definitely be a turn off because um, it's like a half-assed effort. They tried to outdo themselves, but it just turned out sort of cheap with the production and the. Uh, shaky cam stuff. That stuff got like really annoying to me fast after the first level. I, I like that they tried something different with the visual uh, presentation of it, but it just really got tiresome when it came to gameplay. And not to mention how ass the ending is. I'm not gonna spoil it, but uh, it's probably the most cop out thing I've ever seen. I think I'll stick to real cop games where you're playing as a rogue, like Max Payne. Thank you very much. Yeah, Max Payne, uh, uh, Payday Two. Uh, they're all good criminal heist games that uh, people should get into. Oh, uh, what about like Condemned Criminal Origins? I have not played Condemned. That is something that's on my to-do list. Uh, I heard the first one was absolutely great, so I'm definitely going to try to check oh, that out. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I actually bought that game not too long ago because I saw it. I was like, because I, I saw so much gameplay, but I was like, man, this game looks interesting. And... I went to a, uh, my my local pawn shop and saw it there, and for for three dollars, I was like, man, this is a fucking steal. So I'm gonna get that. So I got it with Lost Odyssey and that, and I totally fucking forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. <laughs> so I have to play that game again. This is what happens when you have a backlog. Unfortunately, <laughs> I have games that are unopened oh, that I really need to play. Don't get Speaking me fucking. 
Don't get me fucking started about backlogs, man. I have like I had like 150 games in my goddamn backlog that I don't even think I'm gonna be able to finish. In the next oh, I'm, you have I'm, like four I've RPGs. Had... I have Silent Hill Origins still unopened, and I think Resident Evil 4 is still unopened as well. Four Cause... RPGs? Are you kidding yep. me? I have like fucking a million RPGs. <laughs> God damn it. The only the only RPGs I have to deal with are like the freaking <laughs> Kingdom Hearts collections. I I have fucking I still have the After Years to beat. I have Lost Odyssey to beat. Blue Dragon to beat. I have um, what else? What's that? What's that game called? Enchanted Arms. I have um, uh, Last Remnant. There's so many fucking games like. JRPGs, fucking any RPG made by Square. Uh, a lot of Atlas games I still need to beat, like uh, the the newest Etrian game, uh, the Etrian Odyssey, the Dungeon, uh, fuck Mystery Dungeon. That's what it is. And there's just um, I still need to beat Digital Devil Saga too. Uh, I I could go on a tangent for all like all day about this, but you get it. You get the point. My backlog's huge and it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> That's it. Oh yeah, like compared to compared to your backlog, Moogle, my backlog is more consistent of like Assassin's Creed games and uh, Far Cry games and all of the Bioshock games and yeah. the Kingdom Hearts games. <laughs> yeah, I still need to beat uh, the first Kingdom Hearts. I haven't actually beat it yet. Uh, the second one I wanted to get, but I'll have to wait a while. Oh, the only one I'm the only one I know I'm gonna have a hard time with is fucking Chain of Memories, because that is on the freaking one point five remix and I hated that the first time I played it. Yeah. Oh well. We'll see how uh things go. Uh I'll I'll keep everyone updated on my fucking backlog that I'll eventually pass through in like the next two years. But yeah. Uh that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, we'll learn about it on your YouTube channel, Moogle. What's up? We'll learn about it on your YouTube channel, because I know you'll be probably Let's Playing most of them. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, I don't Let's Play a game until, like, I actually have time with it. So it's just, like, if I beat the game a few times, do practice runs and shit, um, then I'll be it. Like, Billy Hatcher, uh, I only did one run of, and, uh, and I'm doing another practice run as well as my LP. So, uh, like I said, I don't really, I, if I were to do a blind LP, I most likely would do a blind LP only on games like Axiom Verge or anything like a Metroidvania. Those games are actually really fun to do blind playthroughs on. Oh, and of <laughs> course, you, you really want the crowning jewel of your backlog to be in your collection, Moogle. And we're talking about Snoopy and the Red Baron. Oh, man. Well, that's not really a that's not really a game that I could add to my backlog. That's just a game that you can fucking kill time on, like all day. Yeah, there is kind of a difference between uh, games that you can do full LPs on and time killers. Yeah, and Snoopy the Red uh, Snoopy versus the Red Baron is that kind of game where it's like it does have a story in that, but it's in its own right. It's more just the gameplay, really. I mean, it's just. It's that fun of a game that you just don't give a fuck about the story. You almost, like, forget that there was even a story to begin with when you play it. So, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and Ilio Juggernaut just said, Ladies, Moogle has a huge backlog. Wink, wink. <laughs> I thought that's pretty funny. Oh, uh, yeah, I know, like, Torres is going to have a hard time, like, drawing your huge backlog. Oh, God. <laughs> <clears throat> Believe me, if you've seen the list of games that I had, it would be like a fucking whole roll of toilet paper of games. I thought you were going to say a whole roll of ice for a second. <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Moogle's backlog is as backed up as DSP's toilet on freaking oh, fast food night. Oh. 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 Shots fire. Shots is... fire and is gross. Uh, from fucking flushing all the fucking soap that Pamela made. <laughs> you gotta get rid of the gowl somehow. Hey, what man. It? It's not the only thing that's fucking shit in that house. Mm. I guess the same could go for a cookie, huh? <laughs> Dude, he'd be in the fucking toilet for hours after eating that shit. Explosive diarrhea! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we know you're going to experience that after the burrito bowls. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, don't remind me of that. <laughs> on the plus side, though, uh, someone asked Rene- you, Renegade, what's your opinion on the recent DS- uh, DBZ movie? I guess you almost said like- DSP movie. <laughs> Oh, there was a DSP movie no one seen enough in their brain will watch Oh, it. no, I can't imagine a DSP movie. What are you talking movie? about? What are you talking about? Project 7, that's his movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, his well, movie's gonna be that. shit now, since it's just gonna be him and Pandalee in a green screen. Yeah, Five Seven Seven's gonna come back in 2020. Oh, no, like, in the in the original DSP movie, uh, he has to fight a golden-plated Frieza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, this attack is bug. What am I supposed to do? Dude. I have to make my hair blueberry, blue raspberry. What? <laughs> Boo's not canon. Right. Oh my god. Yeah, he would say that. <laughs> he did say that. He did? Oh no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He did like... actually say that. He's like, he, during the intro, what was it, of um, Battle for Z or some shit, he's like, because Boo came up when he's like clapping and shit. He's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, Boo, that's not canon. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, you know. Oh, God. How could he How could he say that? Garlic Jr. was the only one that wasn't canon. I think I Broly, know. too. If I'm not too mistaken. I'm not sure. I, know, I thought they tried to make Broly canon with him being the legendary Super Saiyan. But I might be wrong on that. Oh, well, eh. Uh... I think we should probably move on because I'm sure Lester has more questions for us. Oh, yeah, shit. Too. But I wanted to ask, I wanted to answer uh, Ghoul World Order's question. The movie is okay. Uh, it's just that the story is not as good as <laughs> I would like it to be because it just seems more generic than it was in Battle of God. So um, they have some cool fight sequences. Uh, they have some weird sort of things going on with the fight sequences because they don't put music in them for some reason. I think it would have been epic to see some like the, some nice orchestral music going on when people were kicking each other's ass. But uh, I think it's okay. It's worth a watch, but uh, you'll find a lot more better material in the show. And hopefully the new show is actually decent because they're making a new show, I think, in July. So can't wait for that. Movie's okay. It's a okay. Sons of Gojima. Oh, wait, so, you, so so wait, when you're saying like um, when you're saying it's like Battle of God, does that mean like Frieza wants to destroy the world because someone stole his footing? No, I just think that the characters in Battle of Gods, especially the new one, had a lot more um, personality to them compared to this one. This one is just seems like you will find something in a generic. Uh, typical DBZ outing, which is to some people is not going to be a bad thing because, of course, they're going to want to see these characters beat each other ass. But it could have been a lot more uh, as it was in Battle of Gods with new people. And I don't think Frieza's resurrection left that much of an impact after watching that, to be honest. Which is what the whole movie is about. So yeah, well, Frieza was a tired villain in most people's eyes anyway, so I can see that. They should have bought back Cell. I still say Cell would have been awesome. Cell, Cell was awesome. I would have gone with an original villain over any of the past ones. Yeah, I, I can I could have subbed that too. Uh, we got a new firework. <coughs> What's up? And that is El Kyle Elio Juggernaut. Thanks for following me on Twitch. And yeah, uh, yeah. hopefully you're on for some more Nickelcast. Uh, oh. as I learn how to stream. <laughs> you'll figure it out eventually man yeah, you're doing great Lester yeah yeah. Twice. you just gotta work on the balance settings and uh, kind of uh, if you have Photoshop uh, actually you know what I could probably hook you up with some stuff later on there down the road but um, once, you, once you get used to everything mm-hmm. uh, you'll pretty much have like your podcast and everything pretty much just like done like you probably have a better podcast than Phil would ever have <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um I guess you should probably move on to your next question that you have to ask us most question are you guys hype for the next Assassin's Creed game no I am not I do not give a fuck about the Assassin's Creed series uh, that's just my opinion <laughs> I played Assassin's Creed 1, and I never look forward after that. Mm-hmm. 
Oh. I am. I am. Just because, like, I actually find the Assassin's Creed series really, really interesting. So, I I definitely want to see where it goes, even though, like, uh, they killed the main character off in 3. <laughs> I do want to try Black Flag because a lot of people said that Black Flag was really, really good. But other than that, I don't have any interest to hop on all the new games coming out. I heard Unity was absolutely garbage, and uh, I'm definitely not getting that one. I don't know about this one. If it turns out to be good, maybe I'll get it in the future. I'm not sure. Actually, Ren, like... um. Fred was saying he was having fun with Unity. I mean, like, it's probably not as bugged as it was before. And I've, I've been watching some LPs of Unity, it, and it looks like a really fun game. I can't wait to play Unity. I'll give them some credit. I do know that they did fix the bugs. Uh, the the stuff that was going on with the face and, and, and the eyeballs, and that was just terrible. So I'm really glad that they did fix that stuff because seeing glitches like that takes you out of the experience, especially if you're looking for it to a hardcore, you know, good story. So I'm glad they fixed that stuff, but it just remains to be seen until you actually play it. And that, and that's the state that I'm in now. I actually have to play the game in order to really judge it. But a lot of word of mouth is saying that Unity really wasn't that greater than Black Flag. I definitely heard a lot of that. So the first one I do want to try is Black Flag. And then maybe I want to try Assassin's Creed 2 later on. Hopefully that's on Steam because I'm not sure if it is or not. I actually like the story, though, Unity. It was uh, actually an interesting story. It gave you a lot of perspective of why they actually have the have the creed that they have. Mm-hmm. You think, it's, um, you think that it's still interesting or not interesting even after a main character died? I was wondering where they were going to go with it after they killed off Desmond, but um, I'm not disappointed. I kind of like the I kind of like seeing what where they're going with it and where it's eventually going to end up. I do like the new theme though. It looks very um, for Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Uh, it looks very gangsterish. So I, I guess you can say that I really do like the theme of it. You know, everyone is in a generic hooded uh, assassin. It looks like they're going in different routes with it, and I can appreciate them going in different time periods with it. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for Assassin's Creed the Godfather. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to be. Either that or that's what Fred is going to call it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's uh... going to be Fred's favorite Assassin's Creed. I can just see it. Yeah, I'm going to make a guy just like Scarface, yeah. I can't wait for that Assassin's Creed about the French Revolution. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. And then we find out that the person we're playing as is the ancestor of Mughal. But Assassin's the thing is, with the French yeah. Revolution, people are bitching about how the fact that the, uh, the, person, the assassin was uh, a female rather than a male lead. So, they, I think that's kind of funny. Is that the Assassin's Creed that was uh, Freedom with the the chick in it? Oh, you're talking I about Liberation. Oh, I was liberation, talking. I was yeah. talking about Unity. Oh, Unity. Oh, Unity was people... based off the French Revolution. So, so people Assassin's were Creed mad at it. I can't tell. Yeah, sure. people are people got pissed off about that fact because of uh, the main character not being female. Oh wait, I thought we were talking about a female character, and the only one I remember was Liberation having a female assassin. Yeah, that's what no. I was thinking of. No, I was I was referring to Unity being based off the French Revolution, but like I said, people got really fucking pissed about that. I thought that was pretty funny. I actually thought um, was, I actually thought it was great how they uh, depicted Napoleon in Unity because like compared to like how they did in like Anime I think Anime that's Anime. the I think that's the only good thing about the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, compared... other, than, other than that, the game is utter garbage. So, but yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I like I said, I've never really been a big fan. Like just just from looking at Unity, I can tell. Like this, because I watched the entire playthrough of it because a friend of mine, and uh, I was I was not faced by the fact that the way the game was glitching and shit and the frame rate and like the the story in that sometimes made no sense. The combat just looked. I don't know. I feel like the game every fucking year another Assassin's Creed game comes out. It's always the same shit. I don't yeah. think there's anything different about it. Like, I, 
I've watched, what was it, two before, and just comparing two to Unity, it played exactly the same. Well, I'm, so, guess, I'm guessing it's just because, like, at this point, Assassin's Creed has fallen into Call of Duty syndrome, and that can kind of hurt a series like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it would be better if they did spend more than a year on it, on each uh, installment, I suppose, but... Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm still, I still really dig the series. I mean, heck, I still play Call of Duty every year, so... Yeah, they are pumping... Uh, the games out in mass quantities, it seems. Yeah. I, I, I say, um, if they're gonna do that, they should at least, uh, make each iteration vastly different from the other. Don't half-ass it and just say, we're gonna put out this expansion pack for, like, $60. Cause it, it's not gonna fly with people. I remember when they did this stuff in the past and you waited for something like an expansion pack and it was really chock full of new stuff like uh the half-life expansion packs i heard those were really good because they had new stuff going on uh but for these if it's just the same gameplay over and over again i can see that longtime fans are going to get burned out because they're going to feel that oh this is just monotonous and it's the same thing every year that's why i haven't got into that's... assassin's creed but i will yeah, that's literally what it is, though. It's it's literally the same fucking game that's being... It's pretty much like they always... They try to, like, um, I guess, brighten it up with a new coat of paint, yeah. expecting people to buy the game. But really, deep down, if you really think about it, it's pretty much the same game every year. The only thing that they do different about it is the story. Mm -hmm. Well, granted, I mean, like, if Metal Gear Solid was in the same uh, syndrome as freaking Assassin's Creed, I mean, you'd probably you'd probably be saying about that too. Oh, it's the same game. Well, no, that, it, that's stealthy. that's not true. That's not true, though. Every Metal Gear is always different. That's the thing. It's always on a new environment. There's always new gameplay mechanics and stuff. Assassin's Creed is literally a fucking glued together. It, it's basically think about this. All right. Uh, it, Think about making a popsicle tower. I don't know why the fuck I'm even saying this, but think what about this, fuck? all right? All right, all right. You make a tower of popsicles, all right? And and it keeps breaking down. You keep rebuilding it. And then you add more shit to it. That's basically what Assassin's Creed is. You're They're adding more shit to it, but it's going to be the same fucking tower. So it's a shitty, fudgy popsicle tower. Yeah. All right. Or basically what you're like after eating a burrito bowl, Ren. Ah, you bastard! You, it's it's pretty much you're pretty much building it from the ground up, and in hopes that adding more shit to it, but it's it adding more shit to that is just gonna end up being the same fucking thing. Yeah, no I, I, I always thought, uh, yeah, yeah, you got a point. I mean, like the adding just you know having the same kind of game, but adding a new but, gimmick can be tiring. But, but get but get this, all right? That popsicle tower also can collapse, and look what happened to Assassin's Creed Unity. Mm. They tried to add so much shit to it to, to the point where the game was absolutely broken on day one. I heard the same thing about Call of Duty Ghost, so I'm not surprised at one point if they just get to a point where they're building that tower and they just decide to say, you know what, fuck it, we're going to make this the most mediocre thing we can possibly do, and we have the basic engine, and we already know people are going to eat it up. That's not the case for everything, because it's eventually going to get to the point where people are going to say, well, fuck this game. Uh, it's not going to do well, and that's been proven with some iterations in the past, so I'm oh. hoping that they keep it fresh somehow if if they're going to keep on doing that because eventually people are just going to move on to something else. Oh no, I can I can totally agree with you on freaking ghosts. I mean, I I remember when I played Call of Duty Ghosts, that was <laughs> the most boring single player I'd ever played. I mean, I'm kind of looking forward to Black Ops 3 to be honest. It's just that I hope that they never do the Strike Force missions again. All right. Um I to be fair, I just as Call of Duty is pretty much actually, you know what? It's almost comparable. Assassin's Creed is becoming the new Call of Duty. Not that yeah. you know Call of Duty was ever improving every game anyway. That's pretty much what Assassin's Creed is becoming. Well, because everyone's just, getting sick of it. Well, I mean, well, and Assassin's Creed it does. I still think it has a better story than Call of Duty. So yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm I'm saying just in general though they they they're pretty much comparable to each other because they're they're trying to re release the same game, add different shit to it, but I remember the game remember... always plays the same. There's nothing that you could say otherwise that makes it any different. 
I remember when Assassin's Creed was kind of like, you know, oh, it's national treasure, but with freaking assassins and Templars, and now it's just, I don't, I mean, it's pretty much like still the assassins and Templar war and everything over the pieces of Eden, but it's like, there's not really much direction anymore. It's as you said, ever since Desmond died, pretty much it's become copy-paste. Yeah. And they are noticing. I mean, the devs do notice this because uh, I think there was a promo video that came out that uh, was highlighting the development of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And they specifically said um, they mentioned Watch Dogs failing and they mentioned uh, Assassin's Creed Unity failing. And they said that um, the publishers did not give them enough time to work on the game. So uh, what I was saying was that the publishers didn't give them enough time. Then they knew they were rushing out a unpolished product. Yeah. So, if as long as they don't do that, then and they try to avoid that in the future, then that's fine. But if they keep on doing that, then more people are going to notice because it's not <laughs> going to keep going on forever. Honestly, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, like, um, the only time that I get bothered by glitches is when it's, like, game-breaking break- kind of glitches. Like in Sonic Heroes, when you're on the rail levels and you keep falling through the railing for some reason. Sonic 06. Or... Sonic or or no, th- you, no, you see, in Sonic 06, you just fall through the floor after making a step. That's oh, how yeah, broken that's the true. fucking game is. That's true. Or Resident Evil Revelations 2, and, and it's constant frame rate drops for some fucking reason. It's like, like your character, like you would, the picture would just freeze, and like five seconds later, it would like catch back up. And it got so annoying when it did that. I hate when the cutscenes were desync. So I can I can readily agree when developers miss out on stuff like that, and they had these extensive testing sessions, and they say, "Oh, we tested our game, and it turns out to be a crappy piece of shit." Like just describe. Then yeah, I can't I can't respect that at all because it's like you had enough time to work on these products. <laughs> just like uh, DMC, for instance, uh, the new Devil May Cry. You have like five years, and uh, there's still glitches and bugs and exploits and things of that nature. I had the question if Revelations 2 really even was tested. I mean, there was just, I mean, compared to even Revelations 1, there was so many problems with that game. I think it was, uh, I think it took them like two years to make, two, three years to make Revelations. No, wait, they had Resident Evil 6 in the process. So, yeah, it took them like two or three years or something in between to make that. They could have tested that thing more. That's all I can say. Yeah. It's Crapcom. Crapcom is uh not that great these days. They only pump out a uh, quantity from what we see, so yeah. Here at Crapcom, we only care about Street Fighter. Yup, pretty much. Yep. I have a question. How the fuck did we get from Assassin's Creed <laughs> to Resident Evil? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Let's talk, how about we talk about how Crapcom's probably gonna fuck over the Phoenix Wright fan base by not bringing over the freaking, uh, the freaking new one with like Sherlock Holmes in it. I I know nothing about it, so I, I that that topic is probably something we shouldn't acknowledge. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I don't know much about it either. So, but I yeah. will say that um. Capcom is not that great on localization because uh, I think a lot of their a lot of their good Monster Hunter games did not come over to the West from what I heard anyway. Yeah. Speaking of which, I, uh, after Peace Walker, I'm never playing a Monster Hunter game. Isn't Peace Walker like really grindy? Yeah. It, it... Basically, Kojima was inspired by the Monster Hunter games and made Peace Walker exactly like a Monster Hunter game. Oh, man. Wait till uh, Phantom Pain comes out. We're never going to see Kama Subu again. He's going to be missing in action. Oh, yeah. I got 100%. That shit just like 100% at all the other fucking games. How long did that take? Forever. Like, I remember with Peace Walker, it was like 350 fucking hours yeah. just to 100% that. I bet if we got 100 hours into that game, <laughs> I didn't even get close. No, I mean, I I pretty much maxed out Mother Base. I did all, <laughs> I got like S ranks on all the main and extra ops. I pretty much did fucking everything. Yeah. I salute you. Thanks, it wasn't easy, <laughs> and I would never do it again. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you. Um, you have any other questions for us, Luster? Yeah. Yeah, we got a couple of seconds to go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry about that, Lester. We haven't been letting you talk a whole lot. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You, uh, you are the stars of the show. 
uh, but you're the one that's hosting it. Yeah. You should be taking the spotlight too, bud. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Come on, man. I, I don't like Can we get an amen? <laughs> I don't like this. Amen. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the next segment. How did you guys get started on YouTube? Oh, God. Okay. Um, long story short, I met a friend who knew another friend uh-huh. who knew this other guy. Okay, no. But anyway, so what happened was um, I got started on YouTube a long ass time ago because um, I started watching, I, I started watching like just some gameplay videos. My The first person I ever watched was a dude that was doing Naruto videos. Yes, mm-hmm. of all the things that got me on YouTube, it's fucking <laughs> Naruto. Naruto, like the, no, it's, it's not like, it's not like, the um the anime it's the games mm-hmm. that shit got got me into YouTube I was like you know what I should just point my fucking webcam at my screen in hopes that I get views and shit and this was when I was young and really dumb but um I started doing that and then later on um I got into some drama and shit yada 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 um so I made a new channel and then that channel got suspended as well as my other channel because I uploaded a movie clip like a fucking dumbass, got copyrighted, and then I made Moodle Master 102, and I started my Let's Play career by just doing just random videos on games that I really like, and the game of all things that made my channel somewhat where it is now, that's still getting traffic to this day, is Chocobo Racing. The most obscure fucking racing game to get the amount of views that it has. Um, what is what brought quite a bit of traffic to my channel, um, holding over 800 subscribers currently, almost 900, and uh, I'm still let's playing to this day, and my commentary is only improving more and more as I do more videos, and um, and I met so many great people. Uh, I met, yeah, you know, I mean, I met you guys. I met a lot of my LP friends as well. Like I met a lot of people. In fact, I even know some uh, some somewhat popular YouTubers as well, but I could, I, I could go into like, uh, less detail about that. Pretty much. I, it's pretty much what got me into doing what I do and doing what I love. And it's, it's a great thing and I'm happy in my current position. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> okay. How did you get started? Um, I basically was a competitive Uncharted 3 player. Mm-hmm. Uh, my old channel has a lot of clips <laughs> of me like going against a lot of people in the Uncharted community. So what I decided to do was, since they had the feature where you could upload videos to YouTube, I was uploading videos about that for a short time. But I figured I need to upgrade my equipment because the in-game video editor was pretty shit. And then uh, I stumbled across DSP. This was back like in 2003 when he was doing Metal Gear Rising. So yeah. I mentioned my story of how I got into the chat and Pandali banned me because I said that, um, what's Wait. wrong with people being ADHD? Why are you attacking them because they won't pay attention to your views and content, Phil? So when I got banned, that's when I ran into Hollywood Kojima and he told me, um, that hey man if you ever want to like make a video about phil exposing the situation then you should be able to do that no problem so that's when i took his advice and i made this how you don't play mortal kombat and the video just took off from there uh it was really fun doing those so i did like multiple versions of them and then i started getting into like more equipment more things for like a new computer a new microphone new capture card so then I started doing gameplay videos. So now I'm trying to like mix the two. I'm trying to give the fan base what they want with the DSP stuff. And I'm also trying to make some good gameplays here or there. So if people want to sit back and just watch me play or watch me do some commentary on it, then they're more than welcome to do so. I think as a content creator, you always have to vary the playing field to keep people entertained. Because if you don't show any amount of effort, you're always going to be left behind. And that's what is happening currently with Phil is... His content is degrading because he doesn't put that much quality into his things anymore. Or his commentary really isn't that funny compared to his 2009 counterpart. Uh, hey, uh, Renegade, two things. Uh, did you say 2003? Because cause me and Ghost World Order kind of heard that. No, I, 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 said, I said 2013. 
If I said 2003, then that was an accident. I, 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 yeah, I was gonna say I could have sworn I heard you say 2003, but it must have been a, a, it must have been a complete like, uh, I guess blonde moment if you really want to put it yeah. that way. And, and Zeg, I'm surprised people actually played Uncharted multiplayer. I didn't think they did. <laughs> it was really fun for the time, and um, it was something that you know a lot of big time people were really getting into, like when the Uncharted 2 community really flooded over and a lot of people said this game was good online, then it flooded over to Uncharted 3 and then more people were playing, uploading, showing montages, they were getting teams together. So it was something that was getting really big at the time and a lot of people did not like me killing them online. So it was like, yeah, I'm going to definitely play this more competitive more often because I'm really good at it. Uh, but if I said 2000. I just wanted to correct myself really quick. If I said 2003, <laughs> then that was an accident. Would you uh, would you consider like Uncharted's multiplayer better than Assassin's Creed's? Um, I don't know. See, Assassin's Creed multiplayer is rather random. It's like um, you get a target, you walk around until you either get lucky or either they get away. And so it adds some sort of dynamic to it that Uncharted doesn't have because it's a straight up third person shooter. But I will say both of them, in terms of fun, is on an equal level. But I don't think I'll play Assassin's Creed competitively because uh, a lot of people like to flop to the next game, if you will. And the last Assassin's Creed game I played was Revelation. So I'm way behind there. I see. Oh, um, uh, Mr. Cyber Iceblood keeps asking if you can beat Resident Evil 2 only using the box five times. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think it's possible. Like, you um, have to carry a lot of stuff from the police station back to the labs, so that would be very tedious for someone to do. I, but he says someone did it, so I'll take his word for it. Uh, Sulu, you haven't answered the question. Why don't you tell uh, us how you got on YouTube, buddy? All right. Not much. I don't have really all that much to tell, though. Um, <laughs> eventually... So, basically, I start on YouTube a lot of, like, how most people do, wanting to watch, like, old TV shows and movies and shit like that, mm -hmm. and then I got into, I started watching video games, like, the games I couldn't afford at the time, I'd just watch them on YouTube without commentary, because I, I just could not stand people talking over games at the time, so that was how I did things, and, 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 uh, it's different now. What with like uh, Rooster Teeth and Wretched Prey, and, like Slow Beast and Diabetes and everything, they cha they changed my minds and showed me how good Let's Players can be. But um, most it mostly depends on the person too, like the personality. Um, yeah. That's why I try to like kind of keep a threshold when I do commentary. Like I'll <clears throat> like I'll try not to say stupid, outlandish things. I'll try to be like very laid back, and that's kind of what I like to do. So, oh yeah, but I mean, like I was exposed to guys like the freaking the Rad Brad and oh yeah, those, those, those I could guys. not stand them. Yeah, yeah, I I feel like their commentary is very forced. But that's just my opinion. Oh yeah, but I mean, like now now I'm very comfortable with watching people play games. Like I I really do dig like Hellfire Comms and their Nintendo playthroughs. And um, so anyway, in regards to me being on YouTube, I had an account, but I never really used it outside of like. Uh, you know, responding in the comments section. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, it was about 2011 or so when um, I got into, into Super Sentai and Kamen Rider at Tokusatsu in Japan. And uh, at the time, there was barely any communities around it. Like, there was... There, I mean, there was uh, M on 4chan, the, mech, the mecha board, and then there was, like, Ranger board, but that was more Power Ranger oriented. So I decided, oh, maybe I'll do some, like, uh, maybe I'll do, like, episode summaries or freaking reviews for, like, uh, current episodes. Like, maybe I'll meet some Toku fans that way. And so I started doing that. And then the more I did it, the more I realized that I started to sound like Linkara, and that freaked me out. So I kind of lost interest. And so my channel sort of went into hiatus. And then one day, and then, like, and during that time, that's when I found uh, DSP, the, S the SOK, and, and everything. And I've been on more on Twitter at the time. So uh, in the last few months or so, I decided that um, 
I would just revamp my whole channel and just start anew. Since, you know, I didn't feel like doing all the old stuff anymore, I wanted a fresh start. So I deleted my old channel and I started up anew for like a more SOK feel to it. And mm -hmm. I haven't done a whole lot yet. I want to do some stuff, but eh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make it work. I'm trying to see if I can get some capture equipment so that way I can start doing a couple Let's Plays or so. Like, to um. some a word of advice for you. Yeah. When you do, and I'm, I'm just going to tell you, and this is, goes to anybody who's interested in doing LPs. Um, yeah. Basically, the, the best thing I could tell you is enjoy what you do. Oh, and, I do. Yeah, enjoy what you do and do games that um, you know that you'll enjoy playing and doing commentary over. And um, just just be yourself. You don't have to be someone else that you're not. Just, just kind of... Be your normal self. Be the casual type of person that <laughs> can bring out commentary. Yeah, 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 I said that. But just, you know, it, it's the best way to go about things is kind of when it comes to criticism because you're bound to get it no matter what you do on YouTube. Because, oh, yeah. I mean, YouTube is built on constructive criticism. Yeah. But the best thing to go about it is just be yourself. Uh, don't let trolls get to you because if you can obviously tell – if someone's trolling you or someone's actually getting giving you legit criticism like you know yeah. your voice uh y you need to turn up your microphone you need to you need to be more enthusiastic you need to be you just need to enjoy what you do um oh. but like the the best the, that's probably the best thing i can do and um try not to try not to kind of force out your content as well try not to like do it under your own liking oh, that's yeah. pretty much that's pretty much the best kind of advice that i can get Oh well, no! I just, I, you, man. Oh no! Definitely. I mean, like, I totally, I totally agree with that. Like, if anything, I'd be like, "Oh, hey, I'll just start recording while I play the game." That's and I mean, that's I wouldn't try to make it like a job or a daily schedule, like fill the. No, you know, you know what? No, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you this right now. All right, I'm gonna tell you this right now, and this goes to everybody that's watching the stream right now. Do not, and I repeat, do not treat your fucking let's plays as a fucking job. For the love of God, all right. Do it as a hobby. Do what you like to do. Try not to treat it like you're getting paid or you're forced to do it, because nobody's forcing you to do it. You do it because you enjoy it. You do it because you're playing video games and you're there to enjoy the game that you're playing. It doesn't fucking matter um, if 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 it's a job or not. You have to. You, you, what, the whole point of doing let's plays is that it's a hobby and that it's something that you enjoy doing in terms of the games that you're playing. So don't pull a DSP. Don't pull those fucking idiots that are just doing it for money. Do it for yourself. And be but, optimistic. Like if if. I'm going to piggyback off of something that Moogle said earlier with uh, criticism. If you just get some, like, troll or whatever, and, and your video is massively liked, or it has more likes than dislikes, uh, there's something that the Blockbuster Buster once said. He's a guy that I follow, and he says that um, if you're in that situation where you have more likes over dislikes, then just brush it off, because... I think what some people like to do when they try to criticize you, they try to invoke a response out of you so you can give them negativity and then they can go back and use it against yeah. you. But you guys, some of us quit <laughs> our jobs and only have $7 in our wallet. <laughs> oh my god. That is... That pretty, guy pretty is a complete idiot. I'll, I'll go on record and say that. <laughs> yeah, like the the length to dislike ratio. Like if you know if you have a lot more likes than dislikes, then you know that you're doing something right. But if people are disliking your video, it's either a people are disliking it because they don't like your video, or b they dislike it just because I mean that, it's it's there for a reason. Maybe they just don't really like the video. Um, I don't think people are abusing it just because it's there. I think it's just like the the natural fact that people don't like the videos. And, like, people that are complaining about dislikes, I'm sorry. I mean, it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of, but I, I say that the, the, some dislikes uh, on some videos, some people just doesn't like when a person says the truth. Uh, so, like I said, I could take constructive criticism, but if someone's just being an asshole, I'm quick to... Just say, yeah, okay, buddy. And then I'll just but throw it back to him or those, whatever. You get those videos that have, like, a shit ton of dislikes and you know exactly why. Yeah. But, 
I, like I said, it's more of the fact that the the feedback of the video itself gives out, though. Like, you can look at the dislikes and be like, what did this guy do this time, you know? But, like, mm -hmm. it, the video itself kind of, like, especially the, the like-to-dislike ratio or the dislike-to-like the ratio, it, it kind of speaks for itself. Um, whether it's a crappy video or a video that you enjoy yourself, it mostly comes down to your perspective. Mm -hmm. well Originally, with my uh, originally when I rebooted my channel though to be more SLK ish and everything like that, uh, I wanted to. At first, I wanted to do uh, let's endures of uh, freaking DSP stuff like going off of you know Miles and like Captain Chaos, and I been it was like uh, Resident Evil Three Nemesis that made me really want to do it. But then it became then I just I saw how oversaturated it is and i became tired of it so i'm thinking more of like i'd rather just do my own lps and make my own commentary of how i'm actually playing the game yeah this uh there's DSP. a lot of people that this so you don't play market is definitely saturated uh, uh I, i'm even <laughs> getting worn out because it's it's a lot of work to put into making one of them really really good yeah uh so I really appreciate it when people tell me, oh, man, you know, uh, DMC2 and RE2 is amazing. Do you know there's like five or six RE2s and yours stand out the most? And I was like, oh, really? I was like, I didn't even know that, but thank you. So it's it's really hard to get into making stuff like that. But I say Lesson Door is a lot more relaxing. Yeah. Um, doing them with the SOK, I, like I'd never been in one before um, after the before. No, it was before the Kingdom Hearts one. So I never been in one during that, and it's more relaxing to just sit there and rip on Phil, uh, and it's not really as pressuring because you know he's gonna fuck up the game, you know he's gonna do horribly, and you're just sitting there waiting for it. But you have like a group of people to talk to. So I say if you're gonna do lesson tours, try to like drag um, maybe a buddy, even any S O K, drag a buddy or two if you think mm -hmm. about bringing that up in the future, and you'll have a lot of fun. Yeah, just... believe believe me on that, man. Like the Kingdom Hearts one, it was probably the best laugh I've ever had. Oh, I could not even make it to the fucking Kingdom Hearts two one. I could not let's endure that. Not with that fucking Mickey voice. FIFA was pretty amazing, I must say. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I just don't like sports games in general, regardless of the person is shitty and um, how bad they are in the game. I just cannot get myself into watching someone play a sports game. That's just my perspective. I don't like sports sims either, but the fact that I, I heard this beforehand, before we even began, the fact that this fucking moron sat there for like 20 minutes at a menu, it, it just blows my mind. I had to see it to believe it. I, I think it was really funny that he got lost looking for the controls of the game when the game literally tells you where it is. And he skipped it like a... Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But, um... From what yeah. I saw, it looked like he couldn't even do the tutorial competently. No. Nope. Yeah. Nope. So, so Lester, oh. any more? Oh, go on. Oh, I was gonna say, I never really told you guys, like, how um, I actually found DSP, have I? No. I don't okay, so, okay, so um, let me tell you a story that like this is a story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, um, so I was a Red, so as you know, I'm a Red Supreme fan, and uh, first time I've actually heard about DSP it was not the freaking uh M MGS2 video that Slow Beef did. It was on a Retsu talk. It, which is their podcast, and mm -hmm. they were talking about how big of an idiot DSP is, and it's like, this is when I had to know how dumb he really was. But, uh, because, I guess the whole thing is that, uh, when I saw the MGS2 video, uh, DSP wasn't really all that much different from any of the other idiots they bring on the Red Supre, to be honest, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, basically, that's how it ended up, and... Uh, after I saw it on Retsu Talk, I went and watched the video. I think the first one I saw was the one where he could not find fucking England on the world map. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. Yeah. And it's like, oh, God, I have to see more. It was like a fucking train wreck. I had to see more. And and that's when I really got into him. But, like, uh, I didn't hate him. Not until, like... Until I started watching the KWO videos, and then I got to see the racism, the sexism, uh, him being a horrible person in general, and just saying the most despicable things, and it's like, okay, this guy needs to go.
Yeah. That that was when that was when my opinion. That's when I became a hater, as they would claim. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it all went from there. Like I was, uh, I was mostly on Twitter at the time, so it's like I met a lot of the people I know now on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> it's always better to meet new people, man. <laughs> yeah. Fucking explosion. I hope you didn't hear that. What? Well, you're what? <laughs> Sorry. What, did you fart or something? No. I accidentally oh. uh, opened the vibe. Oh. I hope I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't hear anything. Him <laughs> spending five minutes in the tutorial area. Did you, being, uh, oh, did you open the vine know. of Pandalee scratching that Oh, window? God. <laughs> no. Oh, what's worse, uh, that video or freaking Torres' picture of Pandalee? It's a tie. Uh, <laughs> it's a tie. <laughs> So, Lester, you got any more questions for us, dude? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, what is your favorite YouTube video? Oh, God. Does it have to be DSP related? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Um, man, that's, that's a fucking hard question. What is up with you in these hard questions? I like, I like, to, uh, I like to ask the hard questions. He likes to mix it up. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, who is your favorite YouTuber, then? Who's my favorite? No, 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 no. You're not changing your goddamn question. <laughs> I'm going to answer this question one way or another. <laughs> um, fuck, who's my... What's my favorite video? Um, I guess I'll let you guys th think about it, too. I don't know if you have an answer right away or not. Um... Well, it's like, which, uh, what YouTube video have you seen more than once? I mean, like, one that yeah. you might yeah, watch. That, that's the different. thing. I've seen a lot of fucking videos. Like, yeah. Okay. Uh... Um, it's Dota related, but I don't really care. My favorite video was, pro like, I still watch it, like, all the time, is the free and Roshan bait that uh, No Tidehunter, a.k.a. Alliance, did. To EG, the fact that they actually fell for it is the funniest part, and um, I, I I could play that shit on repeat and listen to Toby Wan just freak the fuck out after like after <laughs> EG fell for that bait. I I could play that all fucking day, and uh, I just think that was probably that's probably the best thing I've ever seen, and that's 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 my favorite video. Like I. I that's probably the only video that I've been watching so much lately. Um, if, if, I, if I had to say, like, uh, current videos, I'd say, like, the Him Daisy Persona 4 webcomic dub. That, yeah. I just love the shit out of that thing. It's so great. Guess I'll <laughs> link that video. Oh, but as far as, like, favorite YouTubers go, I got quite a few. Like, um, I'll, I'll just for my sub list, I like Mr. Medicare slash Internet Aristocrat. I like uh, Cheshire Cat Studios, which is how I found Internet Aristocrat in the first place. And Cheshire Cat Studios is a really great, is a really great YouTube channel. You guys got to check them out. Um, uh, I like Rooster Teeth. I'm a big fan of like Gavin and Michael from um, from Achievement. Yeah, Rage I love Rage yeah, Quit. Rage Quit. Yeah. Are, are, are we talking about favorite? I thought we were talking about favorite YouTube videos, not favorite well, YouTubers. We're talking about we both. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. I never answered my favorite YouTuber part. Uh, uh, <laughs> you said yeah. you were thinking about it. No, I I said my favorite video, but uh, not uh, favorite. Uh, YouTube. I'll uh, think about it. Okay. Who's favorite YouTuber. Yeah. Who's um, your favorite YouTuber then? God, there's so many fucking people that I like watching. That's the issue. <laughs> I'll, let, well, I'll, fi I'll finish what I was on uh, mine then. So I, yeah. I like uh, I like Rage Quit. Like Michael and Gavin are like my favorite Rooster Teeth people, and mm -hmm. I love. Uh, I'll say why I like Rage Quit. It's because when Michael rages at a game, it's exactly the way I rage at a game. So it's like it, that's more of like a oh man, this guy reminds me so much of me. <laughs> and then the other, and then like I like. Red to pray. I like GTA series videos because they're really good at freaking like um, and they're really good at making GTA playthroughs. And I like Mr. Creepy Pasta. Like I, w I was really big in the Creepy Pasta, and he was the guy I always followed. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. So, uh, my f my favorite YouTubers. Um, a knuckle pull. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, plug yourself. I, I also love Knuckle Pro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. What what, what do I really like? Anime. Um, the anime. <laughs> anime! Uh, yeah, I almost forgot to mention, like, he's not YouTube, but I also like the masterful Brad Jones, a.k.a. the cinema snob. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that okay, guy was no, the last. I, uh, I really like Blackbuster Critic, just because mm -hmm. he likes he rips on so many fucking uh, console fanboys, and it's absolutely hilarious. And the, the Sonic fan base too. I like watching Dota What the Fuck moments, because that shit is mad hilarious. Because there's some there people do some stupid shit in that game, and it's mad funny to watch. Oh, you um, like watching Smash videos? I remember that. <laughs> oh yeah, GR Smash. I love GR Smash. GR Smash is fucking awesome. Uh, I also like Holy Hexor and Bomby. They're, they're also really good people to watch if you like the, it in terms of Dota content. As far as uh, other content goes, though, Let's Players, I really like Slow Beef stuff, especially lately with his Binding of Isaac runs. And I also really like Northern Lion. And I also like watching a lot of... Um, there's another friend of mine, Lancer, and I like watching his videos. Uh, he, he's a let's, he's one of uh, a, a good friend of mine, although I don't really talk to him much anymore. Um, still, really cool guy, um, especially to watch. That's that's pretty much it. That's all I can really think of. Uh, oh, hey, uh, hey, 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 go here. Oh yeah, I was gonna say Moogle before you we before we pass the red. Uh, someone asked what your favorite game dev is. My favorite game dev. My favorite game dev. Um. Whoever made Dota. <laughs> you mean Valve? <laughs> you, you mean Valve? Yeah, I love Valve, but no. Um. Oh, so you love Gabe Newell then? Well, he he brought Dota two to life, so why not? But anyway, um. Yep. Gabe basically gave himself. Oh fuck no! <laughs> <laughs> um, I like you know what big shout outs to Idea Factory because um, Idea Factory they're the ones that brought Hyper Dimension Neptunia mm -hmm. to PC and um, the, the series of games I mean like they always try to do something different with that series and it's great and it's a really good series um, Compile Heart as well but I'm the Idea Factory has done so much for me lately like they gave me beta access to Rebirth 2 on PC and they've like um i got some deals from them too and they're such great it's such a great company and the community um a part of that company itself like i really like their games and fairy fencer f like that was probably my favorite game that kamal hart and oh. idea factory worked on and like there's so many things they've they done lately that i just really respect and um i i really do hope they go places um I want to say as po in terms of popularity, but I really want them to bring uh, more Hyper Dimension Neptunia games. I don't care what Hyper I like. I don't care if it's a fucking racing game. I'll play that shit because I love the series that much. I'm surprised you didn't say Atlas. You know, you know what? Uh, Atlas is not too far behind that either because I really love the SMT games. I love me some difficult RPGs and the SMT games and Etri and Odyssey. Like, oh god, they did so fuck. They did so much. They brought out Devil Survivor Record Breaker, and uh, like uh, recently the, the Dungeon Mystery Dungeon Etri and Odyssey. Uh, it's such such a great fucking game and uh, amazing. They did an amazing fucking job on that. Like really bang on job. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. that's that's all I can really say. Favorite game dev. There you go. There's so your about, answer. So what about you now, Renegade? We didn't get to you yet. All right. Um, mine's gonna be brief because I'm gonna try to um let you guys get to the other questions. But uh, in terms of favorite YouTube videos, I say anything from the CWCville library because seeing Chris Chan act like a complete idiot. Um, I don't know why, but it always makes me laugh. <laughs> seeing this idiot hump his PS three or whatever it, it just it's just mind-blowing how dumb it is but oh you just boy. can't stop laughing is it and, is it is it bad that i actually watched him masturbate into a thing of uh, a cup of fanta and oh! I, I fucking like i sat there laughing my ass off the entire time in dis and i was also in disgust but it was more funny than it was man. disgusting man um, Chris, so Chan, 
gross. I will do my challenge immediately if someone makes that up for, like, Chase. Someone puts that as a challenge where he has to watch Chris <laughs> Chan jack off into a cup. <laughs> Chase would kill you if he had to do that. Hey, I, 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 he's, they said Dude, they wanted wants, us to do the challenges early, fucking, so why not? You watch Boga no Pico. Like, I mean, what could be worse than that? That isn't enough torture. I say more. <laughs> um... Oh man, like Christian is what Linkara could have become if he hadn't gotten knee fame. But uh, the second part of the question, the uh, favorite YouTuber, I have to say, Young Yeah puts out pretty unique work. He's been yeah. giving, he's been getting a lot of interviews with uh, some favorite voice actors, mm -hmm. and it's always entertaining to see um, how they began voice work or how they began in the industry. And what takes that they have in the current roles that they have now. So <laughs> I really enjoy that um, he has a whole new level of dynamic for his channel. And he also does Let's Play, so I might actually check that out. He's alright. Yeah, uh, I, I like him. Uh, if I had to say, if there was a second runner currently, I do like uh, Alpha Omega Sin a lot. Yeah, I like him too. Uh, I like it. I also can, I can also like watch uh, Razor Fist too. Uh, he's pretty good. Yep. I used to be big on Razor Fist like in the past. Now not so much because um, he really defends those crappy games like Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, defending that to the ends of the earth is something that I don't agree with. But other than that, there has been like I, I can't say that he doesn't put work into his videos. Uh, I was gonna say like he defends Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah, he did. I, I think he defended that in another crap game. I, I forget what it was, but he, he has that tendency to um, defend a lot of bad games and, like, bash on a lot of good ones. So I don't really like that back-and-forth dynamic that he does. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. I mean, I kind of hate it when he kind of bashes on anime in Japan and shit, even though, like, he's been there. He likes some Japanese stuff. Oh, Moogle, they want you to endure more anime stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what? fucking Shogoth in the chat. What the I, fuck I have no Luke problem Luke? with that. I mean, I've, I've seen I've seen worse. Oh, no, he said friend loop, my bad, but still. He, yeah. He's saying Weebo stuff, so I was wondering, oh, my God. Oh, I, I get gonna it. Say, I, I watch I watch anime all the time, so Weebo shit, like, especially, like, very cringeworthy stuff, I've seen worse. Oh, I it. Show Gods wants you to let's endure Lucky Star, Moogle. Oh! That's oh. It's not that bad of an anime. <laughs> it's the first one I could think of. Endure Boku no Piku again. <laughs> oh, well, lordy. Hey, Moogle, could you do it without, you know, getting paid to do it? Yeah, I could, I, I could gladly do that. If it was for charity, but that's Che's goal, so, yeah. He was the one that agreed to it. So I no, I just mean, like, that. would you would you do it if you weren't getting paid twenty bucks? Yeah, I would do it for charity. If it wasn't, if I wasn't get paid myself, but instead, r rather than the charity itself getting money, yeah, I would do it. Well, it's a charitable or, thing. Or even like outside of the charity, you're out. Uh, like I mean, you mean you mean like doing it for fun? Yeah, I'd have no problem doing doing it for that either. But yeah, or well, like as a, like as a dare, but you know you ain't gonna get any money out of the dare. That's all. Yeah, I know. Um, I I would, but I mean, like I said, I've seen worse. People exaggerate that shit being absolutely horrible, but I've seen way worse than that. But yeah, um. <laughs> Renegade. Mr. Lester, do you have any more questions? Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> He's got like an entire fucking checklist. Uh, what do you guys think of Patreon? Oh, what? Patreon. Patreon. What do we think of Patreon? Okay, um, I'm gonna tell you one thing. Um, there's certain people that I respect, um, in terms of, like using Patreon right, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you straight up. There's there's two people that I respect using it. That's Bullshit and Draskal. Why Draskal? Because he actually has a really really good goal. Basically, if you pay him um, like twenty dollars or action, I think it's five dollars or more. He'll coach you in Dota two. He's a really like he's a very experienced player. So 
uh, like he used to play competitively, and he basically he'll coach you into getting better at the game, um, and like that's that's pretty damn good deal. And for a significant amount of hours, that's that's really nice. That's bullshit. Is doing it right um, because of early access to videos and stuff, being part of the projects and stuff. Like that's that's what I like to see people do with Patreon is interact, like just just be able to interact with your fans that are giving money. Mm -hmm. However, Phil is not doing it the right way. He's putting all the games that he wants to play mm -hmm. behind a paywall, so people are forced to give him money to play certain games. That's literally what he's doing. Um, Improving on his equipment, sure. I mean, everyone else, uh, as far as a milestone, sure. I mean, they they they're they're free to upgrade their equipment, but he did it the worst way possible, the absolute worst way. And on top of that, his Project Seven thing that's probably never gonna come out. He put that shit behind a paywall too, rather than just being it, it being a project in itself um, that he could work on his own time. But no, he has to promote it through his Patreon. And make himself look like an utter and complete jackass. That's how you don't do a fucking Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, but in my honest opinion, if I were to say uh, my my like what I think about Patreon, it's hit or miss. It depends how you use it, and it depends what you do with it. I'm I'm just gonna say that in regards to Patreon, it's like what Kickstarter and Indiegogo was when they first started: get rich quick schemes. And this is why I think that, because now on Patreon, you've got guys like Movie Bub, you got Anita Sarkeesian, you got like all these people who are making over $4,000 a month, and they're not giving people anything at all. People are just donating to these guys and not getting anything out of it. And like, I guess this is why Phil loves Patreon, because finally now, he, people can donate to him, and he doesn't have to do jack shit. This is basically the problem with Patreon, and it was the problem with Kickstarter and Indiegogo until people started to crack down on them too. The problem with Patreon is that is that these people are not required to actually give their patrons anything, and that is where it all falls apart because now people are just scamming these good nature people who are giving them money, even even if they're fans. It's it's not right at all. I'm going to agree with Mugun Kamasubu. I think that um, a lot of people tend to abuse it, which I never understand why. I, I don't see that you make this, you, you're supposed to, like, give back to the community. That That's my usual response to everything. You're supposed to try to give back to the people. I like when people use Patreon to either get new equipment, to try to, you know, better the entertainment value for their audience, to try to get new mics, to show that they really care about their fan base. When you just use it to say shit like Phil does, where you say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to use you guys' Patreon money to do with whatever the fuck I want, and if I don't feel like giving you back quality content, then tough shit. Uh, when I see things like that, it's just such, it, it's just so pathetic how people keep buying into, um, people's bullshit that really don't deserve the money, that don't really put the time and effort to deserve the money, but people throw money to them anyway. I, I do think that they should enforce goals so that people should reach their goals no problem, and if you don't, like, give the goal back to your fan base then they'll, like, either stop it all together or do something with it. I, I think that the people that are donating do deserve something, and I hate when people half-ass it. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you remember that episode of South Park where they, uh, where the kids made the Kickstarter and, you know, they stole, like, the, the, uh, the Redskins name or something like that, and then they basically made a Kickstarter to do nothing? That is basically what Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and Patreon have turned into. It's basically internet welfare. That's all it is. Yeah, I, I don't like when people do that at all. It gives them more of an incentive to be lazy and not do a goddamn thing with their life. And uh, I was not raised to be that way. I was raised to work hard, uh, train hard, and eventually good things will come from there. Um Sitting on your ass and expecting the world to hand things to you on a silver platter n never rarely happens unless you were born rich or something. So exactly. I, I don't think that people should be abusing it. And I think that the people that are giving back to their um, fan base 
they get a huge fucking round of applause for me because they're actually really listening to their fans. They're not just treating them like pieces of meat or views like people like Phil does. I, I think that those people deserve a pat on the back because they're really trying to bring the entertainment value to a whole new level. Exactly. I can agree with that. Uh, we're accustomed from Ask FM. All right. And this is for Wintergate. Okay. All the flavors on you so snickered it. Uh, I don't know fucking show go. I, 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 I knew, <laughs> I know you were going to get a question like that. Oh, uh, yeah, Shogov is the only one who was obsessed with Snicker Dicks. I will say, um, if anyone is in the stream now, do him a huge service and spam his inbox with Snicker Dicks or Pandaly Half Naked Photoshop because he really loves that stuff. He loves it a lot. He says it in the SOK chat all the time. Hey, Renegade, if hungry, why wait? <laughs> yeah, if, if he's hungry for Snicker Dicks, why wait? If he's hungry for Pandalee, why wait? That's why he obsessed with that Who's Scout video like 5,000 times. Alright. Uh, let's wind things down. But first, uh, I want to announce something. There will be no podcast next week. Sadly, because I will be in Texas. So, yeah. Uh, the next podcast will be June 2nd. So, um, watch out for that. And also, we need to announce the DSP Video of the Week. DSP Video of the Week? Yes. This is... And the winner is, of course, DSP Gaming vs. Civilian 86 by the King of Quiet Babies HD. So, let's give a round of applause. Look right, babies. It's been a clock, babies. One half for you. One half for Alright. Um, he won again. Uh, so, what again? Where can we find you? Um, you can find me on YouTube at Renegade Operative. You can find me on Twitter at Operative Ren. I am currently still working on some This How You Don't Play stuff for Xenoverse, so it's taking a long time. Uh, I, I think I made a recent update video announcing it, so it's going to be coming soon, but so far it looks really good. And you can find me uploading that probably like next week or something. Kamasutra, where can we find you? Uh, as for me, you can find me on Twitter as Kamasubu, and on yeah, you can find my YouTube channel under the same name, basically, but I don't really have anything uploaded outside mm -hmm. of what I did for the charity. Moogle Claws, where can we find you? <laughs> what? Say that again? Moogle Claws, where can we find you? What the fuck? Santa 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you can find me on YouTube under Moogle Master 102. You can find my Twitch under the same name. You can, um, and on YouTube, I, I, soon I'll be able to finish Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg and then I can uh, move on to my next project, which also leads into a giveaway. I'll update that into later detail. Um, Ooh, giveaway. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a giveaway. And this, anybody can enter. Uh -huh. It can be friends, can be people that uh, are new to the channel. Don't matter. Anyway, Twitter, you can find me under Moogle Senpai. And uh, I'll, yeah, update you on whatever the fuck I'm doing. But that's pretty much it. Let it go, Moogle. Alright, and you can find me on Twitter. At my new Twitter account, at Anoka Plus. You can find me on YouTube at Anoka Pro. You can find me on Twitch, right here, at Anoka Pro. I stream sometimes. Uh, I'm still being a noob at streaming, so be patient with me. Uh, what else? You can find me on Instagram, at LesterS4ZW. And, yeah, so, guys, I want to thank you so much for being my backup guest. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. 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 Thank you I so much no for being that. here on short notice. Much appreciated. <laughs> um, and I will see you guys later on June 2nd. So, uh, bye. See you fuckers later. Bye, bye, -bye. Casey. <laughs> <laughs>